How much sleep do you think you've had since the horn sounded on uh, Thursday night? Uh, not much until, I guess, the past day or so. I slept pretty good, uh, I'd say this morning, anyway, because we're still in the West Coast time zone. Um, didn't get much to sleep much last night. You know, went to sleep like early this morning and then slept in this afternoon. But uh, you know, we've been going. What is it, I mean, did you, you, you stayed in San Francisco? We stayed in the Bay after the game. Yeah. And then uh, the families flew home. Some of us, the team anyway, we went to Vegas. What happened to Vegas? Uh, stays there. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that before or not, but uh, Vegas was a good time. And then, um, you know, there was a group that went to L.A. after and a group that came back home. I was one of the guys that wasn't built for that um, <laughs> continuance of partying in L.A. scene. So I decided to bring myself home to get a day or so. But um, I heard LA was was nice. Vegas was nice too. But it was, you know, good. You know, team fun. Enjoy each other. You know, before everybody you know, breaks out, and disperses after the, the the parade. I'm sure guys are flying as soon as it's over. Some guys are getting out of town. But you know, to get a couple of days with each other to enjoy it, um, I thought it was important and, and a good time. You, you, you've won a title before. Mm -hmm. Some of the guys that come in here and haven't, they, they almost still can't quite process it. Um, how long maybe does it take to kind of accept that you're a champion and that it's over and you can enjoy it? And I think my the, well, the first one anyway, I'd say my first one is if I won a bunch of them. Just <laughs> the first one that I, I, I won, it, it took me a while. Um, probably sunk in a little more when I got the ring the next season and then sunk in more each year of how hard it was to get back there. Um, so I definitely appreciated it more this time around because I know how hard it was. I was pretty spoiled in San Antonio. I was. We went to a bunch of Western Conference finals. We won a lot. Got to the finals back to back years. And I just thought, you know, it's, it's part of the life. You know, it's a part of a lot, a lot of guys never make it there. And, and I kind of understand that more as these last five years have passed, uh, how hard it was to get there and also get it done. Um, you know, just being and having a lot, of, a lot of luck on our side, being healthy, the healthiest team at the right time. Um, so, yeah, this was a. And it probably won't sink in for them, I said, until they get the ring, and then probably some years later, for, especially for the young guys. Uh, Pat McCall, he's, he's got three of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know when it's going to sink in for him. He, he, but if anybody's looking for a, a good luck charm, it's the guy to sign, I would say. Danny, yeah, following up on that question, um, you were part of that Spurs team that knocked off the two time defending champions, mm -hmm. and now you're part of a Raptors team that knocked off the two time defending champions. Mm -hmm. so it's somewhat similar, but what does the weight of that history feel like to you? And did you compare draft experiences at all? Uh, I try not to. Um, I don't like to. It's just different times, different eras, different teams. Um, obviously, two very good, you know, ball clubs, organizations, um, but just different, you know, times, different generations. Obviously, younger LeBron, younger D Wade, um, and Golden State. They were banged up. They didn't have a full strength, but they're still a very good, you know, team. Regardless of who's on that floor for them, they make you earn it. And we had to fight and scratch for every, you know, win every possession that we got, um, even with Clay and KD out. Um, but you never like to see, you never want to see, you know, guys like that get hurt or be out. You you want to play them at their full strength. And um, I think it'd be interesting and more fun uh, to see if possible, you know, if we can match match up with them at their full strength uh, at some point. And you never know; it might happen again in the future. Hopefully. Um, it's not much for me to say to him. You know, he's a grown man with kids. Uh, I don't have any kids yet, but you know, we're both grown, making our own decisions for what's best for him and his family. He's gonna consult with his family, his agency, and whoever else he keeps close to him, uh, and make a decision just like I'm gonna do the same. But I think his decision impacts, you know, not be foolish here. It impacts a lot of guys' decisions because you know, he can change a whole organization. He can change a whole team. Um, you can change a lot of guys' careers or make a lot of guys' careers easier. Um, you know, so that decision weighs on, I think, a lot of other guys' free agency decision. Um, but for me, uh, some weight on his decision, but mine is just, you know, figure out what's the you know, next chapter for me, the best position for me. And 
this one was a fun one. I liked it here, and I would definitely said love to come back and be here. Um, but you don't know what's in store. Um, we got a couple weeks before free. Luckily, said so we took it all the way down the stretch as far as we could to where we don't have to wait too long for free agency. Um, so that that makes it easier. But enjoy the parade tomorrow. Uh, sit down, talk with my family, my agent, and, and figure out you know the best decisions or situations, and then wait till free agency hits and you know see who's interested, see what what's going on, and who wants to bring me where or bring me back, or and then you know figure it out from that standpoint, and then we weigh the options. I think he's still looking for that. You, you, I mean, even though we're such, for me anyway, said, I think I've been said lucky. This is my second one. So knowing how rare it is and, and this feeling of being on a high, uh, you kind of crave that again. And you don't want to lose that, that high. So uh, the motivation for me is to continue to find that, that again, um, wherever it may be. Um, obviously, the best situation for me to, to be able to play and compete on the highest level, but in a situation where I can continue to win, be successful, and have an opportunity to be in this place again, be in this position again. Um, so, but I think everybody else, the motivation is to, set, to continue to to set, compete at the highest level, continue to win games, and some guys, you know, just provide for their families. They want to continue to, you know, play, have the best job in the world, doing what they love to do, you know, playing basketball and earning a contract. So I think, you know, a lot of guys going, oh, I want to earn another contract and I want to win. I think all those things come into play. Uh, but for me, obviously, I would love to continue to keep playing basketball in the NBA. Um, that's my motivation. I can try to continue to keep a roster spot, uh, fool a couple teams to keep me around for a little bit longer, but also to win some games and, and stay on this high and, and hopefully never come down. Didn't get a chance to ask you this during the celebration. Uh -huh. uh, Oh man, it was I was probably most trusted than anybody in the world there. Um, it was a suicide watch. I uh, probably shouldn't say that, but, but yeah, it was it was stressful for me. And even Kelo after the game was like, "Are you all right? You here? Are you with us? Or what's going on? Let it go. You know, flush it." I, just, I was so happy. I was enjoying myself, but I really did thought I, I cost us the game um, in that uh, the final possession on offense. Uh, but you know, it's like Mark w was great. Um, Jay Lynn was great with you know keeping me positive. I'm like, no, we're gonna get the stop, man. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, there's not much you can do in that situation. You were caught in a corner. He's a pretty good defender. You, you do what you could. You gave him an outlet at least. You gave me all the positives. It made me feel good about myself. When I know I, I screwed it up, it was rough. Um, but hopefully in a couple months, nobody will ever remember that play. Forget about it forever. And, um, you know, hopefully they can take it off of the, what is it, the little ticker. What do, have, what do they do, the little ESPN, uh, what is it, that's talking, play-by-play? Yeah, we'll try to delete that from the play-by-play -play if we can. <laughs> Danny, Anybody got any pull on that? <laughs> Danny, no. the, the play, the play when when Clay went down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just maybe walk through walk through your version of that because it got lost. Yeah, well, um, and I, I, to Clay I know I wasn't. Uh, I, I tried my best to. I'll, uh, I haven't reached out to him personally, but I, I did through other various uh, routes. So. Um, Obviously, I, I know I wasn't really impacting the game as much offensively as I would like to. Um, I hadn't gotten an attempt up at that point. Even the rest of the game, I didn't. But um, defensively, I was trying to be as active as I possibly could and getting rebounds, getting steals, deflections, and limiting those guys as much as possible and not letting their crowd get into it. We try to keep the crowd out of it on the road. And, um, you know, he was going up for for a dunk. And, um, and I know he, he could jump. And I thought he was going to go up with one hand. And I... I didn't think he had a step on me. I think we were kind of side by side. We had a pretty good. If he had a step on me, I'd probably be like, all right, I'm probably not going to get this. But I thought I was ahead of him to where I can get to the ball. And uh, he went up with two hands. And I was like, all right, well, I think it's a little easier for me to get to the ball you know, with him going up with two hands than one hand. It's hard to find the ball with one hand. Um, but I, I went up, and I thought I got a piece of it. Um, and I wasn't sure how clean it was. I thought it was pretty clean. And he's strong enough, but he still got the ball to the rim. I was just hoping it wasn't going in. And then it came out. And um, they called the foul. You know, given in those type of situations how fast it's going, usually they do call fouls as, you know, contact. And the guy, and he came down funny. I wasn't sure what happened. 
And I saw him grab his knee, um, and he looked like he was in some pain. He's a tough kid, though. And you never know how serious it is with him because he just w walks through and plays through anything. Guy came back on the court uh, like it was nothing with a torn ACL and shot his free throws. But um, as soon as he came down, I was just like, damn. And then he was laying there for a while. And I knew it was more serious than um, than a normal just bump bruise. And, uh, you know, the rest of those guys, were, they were making sure that I didn't, you know, I guess take it the wrong way or feel too bad or guilty about it. You know, it was a clean play. They was like, we know you're not dirty, Iggy. Draymond was like, yeah, you want to for the ball. You know, he just came down funny. It's not your fault. Like, don't even, you know, worry about it. We know you're not a dirty player. And I wanted to check on him at the, fa at the foul line. He was like, yeah, I know you're not. I know you didn't do it purposely. It was, you know, weird play, it happens. Um, so I didn't know the severity of it until after the game. Even after the game, I didn't have my phone, so I couldn't check. And I had spoke with Draymond after the game, and I asked him, is, is he okay? I told him before we celebrated, I congratulated him on the season, shook their hands, and told him to check on Clay for me, make sure he's good. And then I saw him in the hallway after. He said, oh, it's ACL. And I was like, oh, shit, you know, it's, it's going to be a long summer for, for not just him, but their team. But, you know, it's a tough fall for both of them. He said, regardless of how much you want to win and compete, and you love to – to beat the best, you never want to see those guys go down and, and go down that way, because uh, they're special players and they have you know great careers, and you don't want to see their careers change or be hindered or be over because of certain types of plays or injuries, especially the ones that you're involved in. Thank you. Anytime goes wrong, what do you expect the parade to be like tomorrow? <laughs> I expect it to be um, ridiculously crazy, um, given the fact that what the videos I've seen, being on the road. Um, Seeing how they celebrated our, our wins in the past, even in the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, you know, jumping on fire trucks, street lamps, uh, tearing up the city. So I'm expecting the fans to be, you know, out of their minds tomorrow. But you know, hopefully, safely, and you know, enjoying themselves. Um, should be a good time though. Should be have a, a good, safe, fun parade. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.